I declare this special meeting of Port Phillip Council open. The City of Port Phillip respectfully acknowledges the Ellicott Willem clan of the Boomerang. We pay our respects to their elders, both past and present, and we acknowledge and uphold their traditional relationship to this land. Please note in accordance with Council's meeting procedure local law, there is no public question time at special Council meetings. In the interests of public safety, Council has temporarily varied the process for members of the public to speak to an agenda item and requires members of the public to submit questions and comments on an agenda item online by 4pm of the day of the meeting. All Council meetings are live streamed to allow the community to watch and to listen in meetings in real time. Uh, the first discussion I want to have, councillors, is to deviate from the order of business. And the meeting procedure local law requires council to follow a specific order of business unless resolved otherwise. Tonight's agenda includes an item to exclude in-person attendance of members of the public at tonight's meeting. I therefore ask uh, or seek a council to move a motion to accept that the item, the item to and deviate from the order of business. Do I have a mover? Okay. Councillor Gross to move. Have a seconder? Councillor Baxter a second. I will now put that motion. All those in favour? That's carried unanimously. So item one, Council's decision to exclude in-person attendance of members of the public at tonight's special meeting. On the 16th of March 2020, the Premier of Victoria declared a state of emergency in response to coronavirus the COVID-19 pandemic. The COVID-19 outbreak is a new and unprecedented situation which is continually evolving. Under the Occupational Health and Safety Act 2004, the City of Port Phillip has an obligation to ensure employees, visitors, contractors and the public are free from risks that could impact their health and safety. In line with the advice of health experts, we've made the difficult but necessary decision to temporarily change the way we run our council meetings. Accordingly, tonight's special meeting of council will, will be closed to the public attendance and instead made available to the public by live stream via council's website and Facebook page. And so I now seek a councillor to move the motion that council notes a, in accordance with its special obligations under the Occupational Health and Safety Act 2014, tonight's special meeting of council will not be open to public, to in-person attendance by members of the public, and instead will be open and accessible to the public via live stream via council's website and Facebook page, and B, that members of the public can submit a statement online uh, to an agenda item which may be read out at the chair's discretion. You can pop that up there. Yep. Perfect. Do I have a mover for that? I'm Councillor Gross, that. Councillor um, Pearl to second. I'll now put that motion. All those in favour? That's carried. Thank you. Two items of apology. Um, Councillors, we're all here tonight, so there are no apologies. Three declarations of conflicts of interest. Councillors, any conflicts in any matters that we're discussing tonight? I note there are none. Four presentation of reports. I'll now move to the presentation of reports, which is 4.1, additional delegations to the CEO. And councillors, we have actually received one question submitted online to this item 4.1. And it's from Paul Littman, who's the president of the Business Association of Port Melbourne. It says, I have noticed that some service providers in the city of Port Phillip are trading outside the government's guidelines in terms of coronavirus. Could the council's traffic officers take on an added responsibility and instruct those they see flaunting the laws to cease and desist immediately? Thank you. I'll ask the CEO to respond to that. Through you, Madam Mayor, the Chief Health Officer has requested council's authorised officers who are environmental health officers and local laws officers to enforce social distancing restrictions in public spaces and at businesses. What that means is uh, local law officers will continue to patrol our public open spaces to educate our community who continue to gather, uh, educating people about the need to uh, physically distance in terms of the social distancing requirements 
environmental health officers are patrolling our major activity centres where restaurants and cafes continue to place out their tables and chairs and are encouraging our community to dine in uh, uh, rather than take away in line with the COVID-19 requirements. Over the coming days, environmental health officers will focus on beauty salons, hairdressers and tattoo parlours, again in line with requirements. E EHOs, health officers have communicated electronically to all food businesses, advising them of food safety tips and requirements as they move to a takeaway food services. As many hairdressers also operate as a beauty premise, we will be communicating with them about the component of their business that can remain open and how to do that safely in the current, under the current requirements. Council's environmental law health officers respond to complaints and tip-offs from members of the public. And if members of the community have concerns, the best way to contact uh, the council is to contact council's assist service and we will send out our local officers. Thank you, um, Mr. Smith. Councillors, um, looking at the item, which is item four, presentation of reports, 4.1 additional delegations to the CEO. Do you have any questions to ask the CEO on this item? If not, we have an officer's recommendation. Do I have a mover for that or something different? Uh, sorry, I had a question. <laughs> Councillor Baxter, a question. Sorry, I didn't sorry, see you all the way down I'm there. I'm all the way down here, that's why. Um, ju just a question. Uh, the report that we're looking at, is that the alternative officer's recommendation? Mr Smith, if you could explain the changes. Thank you, Councillor Baxter, and through you, Madam Mayor. Um, so the report is a changed alt rec to the report published on the website. The uh, 3.1 has changed, uh, so the words in the opinion of the CEO has been removed in relation to planning delegations. If you go down, please, Sam, if we can do it. Um, just on to, I know we're having technical difficulties. Um, and under uh, 3.4, I think it is, yes. If, uh, so we've inserted the words after the, so, so I don't know if Sam can highlight that in red. So it was all state of disaster if activated. If council is in the opinion of the CEO following discussion with the mayor or deputy mayor, and that clause has also been inserted, I believe, into 3.5, which is below 3.4 and 3.5. So wherever, uh, can you just show that, please, the next slide down, Sam? Uh, sorry, it's the one above, 3.4 it should have in it as well. Oh no, it's 3.5 only, but that applies, thank you. So that's the major changes to the officer's recommendation, Madam Mayor. Thank you, so just confirm that's an officer's recommendation. Does that answer your question, Councillor Baxter? It does, thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, so are there any further questions? Councillor Brand? I just, <coughs> I just hate to say this, but shouldn't it be Mayor Deputy or acting mayor, there may be a circumstance when there's. Um, I uh, I'm happy to. Uh, so I'm happy to put in um, or after the words deputy mayor Sam, in both this one or other councillors in, in those acting capacities. And we need to do that in three point one as well, please Sam. Okay, thank you. All right, so. Um, we'll keep moving rather than just wait for the, those, that minor amendment to be made. Do I have a mover for that officer's recommendation? Councillor Brand to move and Councillor Crawford to second. Councillor Brand, would you like to speak to the motion briefly? Um, just briefly, these are, these are uh, provisions that we need absolutely in this, uh, in this situation of the um, pandemic uh, crisis uh, where there are all sorts of things that we can't even predict can happen um, and this delegation actually um, in a state of in a state of disaster um, needs to be made to the CEO and I'm completely happy with the way it's expressed and uh, the way it's designed to address the problems that we can barely even foresee 
arising. And I thank everybody who has uh, spent a lot of time putting um, their, their brains into getting this right. Thank you, Councillor Brand. Councillor Crawford, would anyone else like to speak? Councillor um, Bond? Um, yeah, I won't be supporting this. As I said last week, we're elected as councillors to make these tough decisions. I don't think we should be um, delegating these tough decisions to the CEO, even in these circumstances. I think you know, we should always be able to get a quorum together at short notice. We've done it tonight. We've done it last week. Um, you know, we should always be able to get a group of us together to make these tough decisions. I don't believe we should be delegating this responsibility to the CEO. We should keep it ourselves. But um, the rest of you disagree, so be it. Thank you, Councillor Bond. Councillor Baxter. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, so I'll, I'll support the, um, the recommendation, uh, as I said last week. Sorry? Am, am I allowed to speak? Sorry, please continue, Councillor Baxter. I'll support the recommendation, and um, as I stated uh, last week, we uh, we should all keep in mind, and the community should keep in mind, that these delegations are only in the case that we are unable to actually exercise our own power. So these delegations are if uh, if we are unable to meet or uh, uh, unable to make those decisions. So it's um, it seems to me reasonable to uh, make that decision. Thank you, Councillor Pearl. Yeah, I'm going to vote for this. I don't like doing it, and I don't think we needed to do it last week, but I think we're going to hit a stage sometime next week where we'll need something like this in place. So we're not going to have another opportunity to debate this again, but I'm moving my vote from last week to this week on the basis that I think this situation is going to uh, intensify very, very rapidly. And, um, yeah, that's it. Thank you, Councillor Pearl. And I just uh, want to reiterate or actually say to the members of the public that are possibly watching this why we're hurrying and being quite quick is because we have had extensive, extensive discussion today um, in conference on this issue. So it's not as if we're, we're seeing this and just discussing this for the first time. And for the, in the interests of health and safety, we're um, trying to limit our time altogether in public. Um, Councillor Brown, would you like to close? Just in closing, just wanted to um, reinforce that point that we are here to make tough and crucial decisions on behalf of our community. And this provision is just for the cases when we would be physically unable to make tough and crucial decisions for our community, and yet those tough and crucial decisions still need to be made. That's, that's when this de power delegation gets delegated to the CEO, and only then. Thank you, Councillor Brand. I'll put that motion. All those in favour? Let's do it under division if we do it before we vote. Save some time. Councillor Brand, um, Pearl has requested under division. So, councillors, I'll ask you to vote. All those in favour? Councillor Copsey, Councillor Simic, Councillor Brand, Councillor Voss, Councillor Pearl, Councillor Gross, Councillor Crawford and Councillor Baxter. All those against? Councillor Bond, that vote is carried. Thank you. We'll move to 4.2 which is titled COVID-19, Council Support Options. There's an old rec here. Just before I go to the old rec, uh, we do have a member of the public that's requested, uh, has submitted a question online. Again, Mr Paul Littman, President of the Business Association of Port Melbourne. I write as President of Port Melbourne Business Association. Many of our members are small retailers, possibly with one or two employees. They lease their premises and pay all their all permits, rates and outgoings. The coronavirus, in many cases, has already shut their business. They are now unemployed with leasehold rents and rate obligations that they cannot possibly meet. Can Council consider redirecting some expenditure items to assist these retailers and their families avoid the horrors of bankruptcy and waive their rate obligation for forthcoming periods? I'd have to say that's what we're here to, to, to um, talk about tonight, so we won't need an answer on that at this point in time. Thank you. Councillors, any questions on this report? Um, actually, Mr Smith, can you outline the um, alterations? Um, through uh, you, Madam Mayor, we have amended the uh, attachment. Uh, so I don't know if Sam has the capability. Um, I'll see if my officer can help me get the, the amendments to the attachment up. So can you go to the... 
and I'll just walk the councillors through the amendments to the attachment based on our discussions this afternoon. These are alt recs. So in line two, item two of the community support part, we've changed the words. That, that now reads, in immediate options, ratepayers assessed as being in financial hardship can defer rate payments for six months at 0% interest charge. And options that we'll look at in red there is we will review financial hardship provisions as part of the financial budget for 21. In row three, we will reallocate existing resources that are not being used because of COVID-19 restrictions to create different services for people with disability age people. So it says for people, but it means those people, such as telephone online and Skype services. That cell of the attachment was previously blank. And in row four, uh, we will use up to 500K from, from the social housing fund which, uh, to allocate to increased homeless services. I'm not sure there's any, there might be some other changes further down, Sam. And just to be clear, that's an officer's recommendation. This is an officer's recommendation. I think they're all the changes, Madam Mayor. Councillors, any questions of that? Uh, just quickly, Councillor Crawford, do you have a question? Seconding. No. Councillor Pearl to move that officer's recommendation. Councillor Bond to second. Would you like to speak, Councillor Pearl? Councillor Bond. Um, I, I know many people out there are probably going to think we're not going far enough, but um, you know, councillors have just spent three hours this afternoon prior to this meeting being briefed on the current situation um, with regard to you know, the City of Port Phillip and our financial situation and likely impacts of the coming three, six, 12 and 18 months on, on the city. Um, there, there is going to be a large gap in our revenue, but we also understand that there's a, there's a community out there, in particular our small business community, but many others across the community who are experiencing a lot of pain this week um, as businesses have closed, as people have found themselves unemployed for the first time in their lives. So there are some um, initiatives in here that centre around things that council are responsible for, uh, includes rent relief for council-owned businesses and council-owned companies, rent relief for South Melbourne market, um, you know, footpath trading fees, all those sorts of things in there. Uh, includes $500,000 from our housing reserve, which has sat there for unused for at least the last three and a half years, but probably longer. Um, in my eight years on council, I don't think we've actually spent a cent from that. Uh, we're going to direct that towards homelessness and homelessness services. We're actually going to put it to use now instead of leaving it sitting in a reserve. Um, so I encourage our community to, to read through the initiatives here. There's uh, a whole suite of them. Um, as I said, it's not going to be enough for some, um, but it, it's what we're able to do at this point in time. And the, you know, we do have an upcoming budget process. We need to pass a budget in a couple of months. It's going to be a very tough couple of months for us as council. Um, and you know, they're, they're, if we're able to do more in that process, we will certainly uh, be pushing as councillors to to ensure we can do more if if that is possible through that through that budget process. Thank you, Councillor Bond. Would anyone else like to speak to this motion? Councillor Simic. Councillor Simic. Uh, May I'd like to move an amendment, if uh, possible, please. Thank you. Can you read that, what that is? Uh, my amendment is uh, for uh, 3.1 um, for uh, wording changes as displayed to the screen. On the screen, would you like me to read? Uh, I would. So please the addition. Read that. Um, of with the following amendment provide up to 500,000 to provide increased services for people who are homeless uh, and notes that further work will be undertaken on other options for consideration to support the community more broadly and that these will be brought back to council at an earliest possible opportunity. So the main change around the, the way the $500,000 will be uh, where that money will be allocated from. Thank you. Don't, yep. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Copsey to second. Would you like to speak briefly, Councillor? Very Smith? briefly, Mayor. I uh, absolutely uh, agree and thank the officers for bringing to us an option to support um, people who are experiencing.
homelessness in our community uh, with a $500,000 um, fund um, to be directed appropriately. Um, I uh, believe firmly that uh, we are not at a point yet where we can decide that that money should come out of the social housing fund, money that was uh, set aside in order to make our inner backyard strategy possible. Um, we are going to need to uh, invest very heavily uh, in the future uh, in social housing provision uh, in order to help support our community um, as we rebuild after uh, COVID-19. So I want to be very clear, I really support um, the fact that uh, we're putting money towards people experiencing homelessness, uh, but just think that at this point in time, uh, without any community consultation, we should not be making a decision for that money to be allocated from uh, the social uh, housing fund. Um, I think that at a later stage, once we've had more time to consult with the community, we can make that decision uh, and um, retrospectively uh, allocate that $500,000 to that fund. But we need to do more work to assess uh, our options before we can make that decision. Thank you, Councillor Simic. Councillor Copsey, would you like to speak? The purpose of the In Our Backyard Social Housing Fund is to provide for social housing and one of the conditions of that is that it's maintained in perpetuity. Um, I think that the $500,000 that's proposed to be put towards emergency relief measures is absolutely crucial, but the, the social housing fund should be maintained because I think, as Councillor Simich has touched on, um, provision of safe, stable and secure housing that is permanent is going to be absolutely crucial over the next few years. I I'm not sure what, um, what sorts of um, emergency relief measures are proposed, but I think that um, the long-term housing provision is equally important as the emergency relief at the moment, so I would prefer to see us spend this 500000 absolutely to support people in the immediate term, um, but also commit to keeping our social housing fund replenished so that when we need to call on those funds in future, which we will, they're available. So that's why I'll support this amendment. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak for or against? Councillor Bond. Um, I'll be speaking against this. Um, it's, you know, we had a three hour briefing this afternoon and the financial position of this city was explained out to explain to us as councillors rather um, brilliantly by the officers. And, you know, the, what was explained to us is, you know, we have a very so very tough decisions coming up. We're, we're in a very um, um, tough financial position in terms of revenue and in terms of spending, and we, we're going to have to make some very tough decisions. The facts are there isn't another five hundred thousand dollars sitting there, sitting somewhere else for us to top this back up. Um, we are going to have to rely on our reserves. At some stage, we may even have to rely on borrowing. Um, so for reserves like this that have been sitting there unused for so many years, now is the time to direct them towards homelessness services in this city. We cannot let these, um, this money just sit there um, like it has previously for the last couple of years unused. We have to put it to use now. The community expects us to sit here and do something. The rest of the measures on here, we've acted very decisively um, and we need to do so here. And we also need to act responsibly um, I know the, the financial, we all as councillors need to get a, a, a grasp of our current financial situation. I'm sure some of you don't actually realise the, the, the dire position we're in at this point in time. So I hope you do familiarise yourselves with our current position because this is just not feasible for us at this point in time. So I won't be supporting it. I support the original officer's recommendation. It is a good use of the funds and you know, we, we won't have any money for a very long time to be able to top these things back up again, and that's the reality here. Thank you, Councillor Bond. Would anyone else like to speak for or against? If not, I will put that motion. Oh, I know this is the amended motion, Councillor Pearl. Um, this, is, this is just um, the amendment only. So I'll ask you to vote on, on Council Simic's amendment only. All those in favour? All those against? That motion is lost. So we're back to the substantive motion. Anyone else like to speak to that? Then Councillor Pearl, would you like to close? 
Thanks very much. With this action tonight, Council takes definitive action to support and care our for our residents, our homeless people and our vitally important traders. This is probably the biggest support package in the history of the City of Port Phillip and it will fall short of what is actually needed in the weeks and months and if not years ahead. Again, our hearts go out to those that have been devastated and affected by this horrible virus. Uh, but don't let your concerns turn into anxiety and panic. We will get through this and we will get through this together. This action tonight, Council should be proud of. It's a first step, it's a real step, and I think it will go some way to solving some problems that are in our community at the moment. But there's a very, very, very long way to go and this Council will step with our traders and our community every step of the way and we'll listen and we'll work together to come to solutions on the problems that we'll face down the road ahead. Thank you, Councillor Pearl. All those in favour? That's carried unanimously. So, there being no further business, I declare the meeting closed. Thank you.